here from Start Some Good. I'm a crowdfunding coach and today I'm going to be talking about where your donations come from. So the whole crowd part of crowdfunding is actually a myth. Crowdfunding is not about crowds. It's about peers, tribes and your inner community and your networks and your ability to communicate with and leverage those networks to fundraise for your campaign. So contrary to um, a popular myth of the crowd, uh, crowdfunding platforms are not donor communities. Even huge platforms like Kickstarter will tell you that 94% of the people who come to individual campaigns do so as a direct result of that individual campaign's outreach and marketing strategy. So even whether it starts some good, Kickstarter or GoFundMe, your campaign's success depends on your ability to get your link out in front of people who care about what you care about and will be interested and motivated to see your campaign happen. So it's very much like not at all like, you know, we will build it and they will come. Really building your crowdfunding campaign is only a fraction of the work, to be honest. Running a campaign means that you're going to need to be sending out communications via whatever channels your donors use, whether it's email, social media, or you know, any other channel that would work for you, the traditional media, blogs, podcasts, to get people hearing about your project, and not just any old people, but the right kinds of people um, who will be motivated to donate. All right, so, so how do we actually do that? So to begin, I want you to have a think about all the people who you know who would be interested in the kind of future that you're creating through your crowdfunding campaign. So you might start with a list of friends, family, maybe you've got a personal email list or maybe your organization has a database of people who've previously uh, financially supported your organization's work. We'd call those your very kind of warm tribe members given that they have donated to you before. Um, you might have a community on Facebook or Twitter or whatever other social media channels you use. And I would encourage you before your campaign even launches to start warming up your inner circle. Get them excited for what's about to happen because you want that inner circle, you know, your friends, your family, colleagues, the people closest to you who care about you to be there with you on day one when you launch because you want to generate a lot of momentum for your campaign right at the beginning. Um, because if you think about, you know, the image of a bus guy with a hat, right? Right? And if you've never heard of this busker before and you're walking past and the hat's empty, you're like, Ooh, maybe I won't throw my money in. But if the busker's hat's overflowing, um, that really kind of validates the busker in a way. It gives the social proof. So that's the function that your day one donors are serving in your crowdfunding campaign. They prove to your wider networks, people who maybe don't know you as well or, or haven't ever met you before, it creates that social proof that your campaign's a really happening thing and you've got some momentum and support behind you. It's really important to rally those early supporters. And then after, you know, maybe the first five days or after that first week, you can start tapping into the wider network. So I would encourage you to think about people in your community who have networks themselves that they might be able to share your campaign through, whether it's maybe you've got someone who's um, in your networks who, who runs a blog or they've got a really big following and engagement on LinkedIn, um, approaching them and saying, hey, hey, would you, would you be interested in helping me uh, get the word out about my crowdfunding campaign? Providing them with some copy, some words and some images to make it really easy for them to share. Maybe you know someone with a big email database or maybe you know someone who's got contacts in the media. Again, starting to warm up those people in your networks before your campaign launches. And this is especially important if you're planning to run the campaign on your own or if you're a very small team to kind of activate and build a community of what I call cheerleaders 
uh, and invite them to go on this journey with you because running a crowdfunding campaign or any campaign is hard work and you need to be really focused putting out your outreach, your communications every day or every couple of days um, to stay top of mind um, and relevant and in front of your donors. So warming up those networks before you start and saying, hey, would you be up for supporting um, me in doing my outreach? Uh, I'd love you to send three tweets or maybe I'd love you to post two blog posts or could you send one email newsletter and include me? And just start to think about what your... um, community might be able to support you with and having those agreements in place before your campaign launches and that way you know that it's not just you hammering out you know out the emails and the social media updates but you'll feel confident knowing that you've got some other people in your network who are also rallying supporters for your campaign. It's really important to think about as well um, the different uh, budgets of your donor community. So there'll be some people who will just chip in 10 or 20 bucks and that's great. And the outreach strategy to reach those people will be quite different from the outreach for the donors who are going to be giving a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars to your campaign. And I encourage you to think about with those large donations, um, the power of face to face connection and um, you know building that social capital and building those relationships offline and ideally prior to your campaign launching um, because someone it's very unlikely that someone who doesn't really know you is just going to stumble across your crowdfunding campaign and give you a giant donation. So um, all the things that you know about offline fundraising and rallying large gifts and philanthropy, you know, put that to use when it comes to rallying support for those really high-end donations, personal phone calls, going and visiting people, maybe even bringing in you know, if you've set up a meeting with with a local business who you'd like to support your crowdfunding campaign, coming in with a, like a nice little one page document that outlines what they get for their contribution, um, and that way you've really warmed them up and built that connection, so that when launch day comes and you email them the link, they're well informed and they know and they're committed and ready to contribute. So it is a fair amount of work to run a campaign. I do encourage you to spend time planning your outreach. Think about your different messages for week one, week two, week three, and week four. I say four weeks because that's the average length of a campaign. If you run a campaign longer than that, you tend to lose momentum in the middle and any kind of momentum you've built up at the beginning has sort of you know, gone down to a trickle by the end. Um, So think about the different messages, think about the different kinds of donors that you want to reach and where they hang out and make a plan to make it happen. If you've got any questions for us, our friendly team of crowdfunding coaches are available to support you. You can reach out at support at startsomegood.com and we look forward to seeing you and your campaign succeed. 